Our next example of how to find the area need a curve uh, is uh, with the function y equals x cubed. First, we're going to set the limits from x equals 1 to x equals 3, and then we're going to do the problem again. Then we set the limits from x equals minus 2 to x equals positive 2. And I did that for a special reason, because if you're not careful, you'll see what happens in just a moment. All right, first of all, let's grab that function. And um, that's also a very straightforward function to graph. We have the y-axis here, the x-axis here. So y equals x cubed looks kind of like this. And then we're supposed to find the area need to curve from x equals 1 to x equals 3. And so we're looking to find the area right here. That's our first attempt, setting the limits at x equals 1 and x equals 3. So it looks fair, fairly straightforward. So the area underneath the curve is equal to the integral from x equals 1 to x equals 3 of the function x cubed dx. Of course, the Integral of that is straightforward, that is equal to x to the fourth over 4. We have to evaluate it from 1 to 3, which means this is equal to when we plug in the upper limit, that would be 3 to the fourth power over 4, minus when we plug in the lower limit, which is 1 to the fourth power over 4. So that's equal to, well, let's say 3 to the fourth power, that is 81. So that's 81 over 4, minus 1 over 4, which is 80 over 4. Uh, which is equal to 20. So 20 would be the area underneath the curve for that function from x equals 1 to x equals 3. All right. And now for the second part of the problem, we're going to set the limits from x equals to minus 2 to x equals 2. So let's redraw the graph again over here. And now the limits are going to be set from x equals minus 2 to x equals 2. And so when we draw the line like that, draw a line like that. You can see now that how there's perfect symmetry. You can assume then that the area here is exactly the same as the area there, but here the area is above the x-axis, here the area is below the x-axis. And Whenever the area is below the x-axis, so between the curve and the x-axis, but below the x-axis, the area will then be negative. So you're going to get a negative area here, you're going to get a positive area there, and they'll probably cancel out and get zero. So let's try that. So we're going to find the area. Uh, when the limits are from x equals minus 2 to x equals positive 2. Now, I did write x equals x equals. You don't have to do that, but this is just for clarity of x cubed dx. When we integrate that, we get x to the fourth over 4, and we're going to evaluate it from minus 2 to 2. So first we plug in the upper limit, so we get 2 to the fourth power over 4, minus when we plug in the lower limit, which is minus 2, to the fourth power over four. And of course, since they are, these are raised to the fourth power, that's an even power, the negative sign doesn't matter. And so this becomes um, uh, two to the fourth power is uh, eight, that's 16, that's 16 over four, minus 16 over four, which is zero, just like we predicted. So here we have to be careful. Now, that could be the mathematical answer that we're looking for, or we can simply say that the area between the x-axis and the curve could be considered a positive area if you define it as such, and you consider this a positive area there, then the total area between the curve and the x-axis would then simply be twice this, twice 16 over 4, or 32 over 4, or equal to 8. So again, depends upon how you want to look at it and how the question is, is asked. Strictly speaking, mathematically, the answer here would be zero because this answer, the, this negative area will cancel out the positive area, and the total area would be zero, but again, Depends how they ask the question. So here's a good example. Keep in mind that whenever the area is underneath the curve, it will be a negative area.